Hey guys, James Lee here with another mukbang. If you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. Today we are going to be having macaroni and cheese. Not your crafts macaroni and cheese, but I like to call this the adult version. So in here we have some medium shells. I made the cheese sauce using, I think, four different types of cheese. I use extra sharp cheddar, medium sharp cheddar, um, I think Parmesan and some mozzarella because mozzarella is like a good melting cheese and then you probably can't see it in this close-up but there is some vegetables in here so I have broccoli and mushrooms just to kind of make it more of a balanced meal I didn't add any meat because um, I didn't have any on hand to add and uh, I garnished it with a little bit of green onions and more cheddar cheese just to make it look nice so let's dig in Still piping hot. I literally just, it was the first thing I did when I got home was just, I got a pot of hot, um, I don't know if you can see the smoke or the steam, uh, but I got the pot of hot boiling water going like right when I got home. Let's see if I can risk it and do a little close up there for you guys. Probably all one color, but Uh, it smells really cheesy. Mm. Mm. It's nice and rich. Actually, I forgot. I even added um, half a stick. Well, I guess they're blocks. A uh, half a block of cream cheese in here as well. So I guess you can call this like a five or six cheese macaroni and cheese. I kind of like um, using these medium shells. Um, the cheese actually managed to like kind of get inside the, I don't know what you call it, the crevice or part of the inside of the shell. So when you bite into it, it's like a burst of cheese flavor each time. See, so there is some vegetables in here. And um, my trick with um, you know, cooking broccoli is to throw the broccoli in with the you know, boiling pasta. That way you're not creating another pan just to unnecessarily cook the broccoli. So I just dump it in there maybe about two minutes before the pasta is done and it comes out perfect. You don't want to put it in there too much because then what will end up happening is the florette part will just kind of disintegrate and then it'll just kind of be like green specks all over your pasta. So unless you want like the actual um, texture and bite to the broccoli, don't leave it in there too long. And I'm quite happy because I've kind of had a bad um, bout with mac and cheese. Like, for some reason, it wasn't turning out the way I remember making it. And I don't know if it was because I was adding, I actually add a little ground mustard in my um, macaroni and cheese just to give it a little bit more of a bite to it. And so every time I added that or I overheated the milk, I felt like it changed the, the cheesy profile of the macaroni and cheese. And today it tastes perfect, but the last couple of times I've been really disappointed So if you guys have ever been to Yard House, um, I don't know if they call it the same dish anymore, but back in the day, they called it um, mac and cheese squared. So that was their macaroni and cheese dish. Actually, Hedu is distracting me. I could feel his nozzle up against my back. Anyways, um, that was one of my first exposures to truffle oil. So I remember having a bite of Mark's um, dish and we both, Bit into the mushroom and we knew there was something magical about it. And I know 
Truffle oil could be pretty polarizing to some people. Some people really hate it. Some people absolutely love it. First time I had it, I wasn't sold on it, but the more times I ate it, I was just like, wow, this is really good. And so there was a phase where we would buy, um, you know, at like the Whole Foods, they would actually sell like a little, well, there's two types. There's the one that's kind of like in a little paint can looking thing. And then there's another one that's in like the small um, glass jar. And so I felt like there was a point where we were continuously just adding it to everything to the point where I don't buy any tr more truffle oil. I actually don't crave truffle like I used to. Um, TMI, but I think when I eat truffle oil, my body knows to like expel it and burp it. And it's not a good thing, especially when you're in a social setting to be burping up like truffle oil. So mini tangent there. But you know, right now it's perfect. I could probably use even just like a drop of it in here and it'd be perfect. Sometimes I'll um, do an extra step and actually mix bacon in there, um, but I didn't feel like making that today. So I don't know about you, but I grew up on the Blue Box Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. That's what my mom would make. and. She would make it and I never understood, you know, this was before I was allowed in the kitchen really. But she would make it and would always put like ground beef in it just to kind of make it more of a full meal. And I absolutely loved the way my mom prepared it. And I'm actually even thinking right now, she probably added onions in there, I think. And just a little bit of ketchup, which I probably overdid it with ketchup because then I would end up adding more globs of ketchup while I was eating it. but. For some reason, I remember those meals being more of like the weekend staple. So I remember eating it a lot on Friday nights. And that's when um, TGIF was on. And TGIF was pretty much how one had fun on a Friday night. This was before we would be able to snap photos to each other, Instagram, Facebook, all of these distractions that we have. It was the TV at the time. And so it was like a block of what, two hours of like sitcoms on ABC. So that's probably if you ever heard of Family Matters or Step by Step, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I mean, there was a couple other shows. I think, I'm, I don't remember if Full House was part of that, but I remember, um, you know, tuning in every Friday night. It was the thing to do. So I'd have my bowl of mac and cheese and just binge watch. Well, binge watch was two hours back in the day and a binge watch nowadays totally means something different. I also added um, a little chili flakes um, at the very beginning. So to make the cheese sauce, you actually add um, some butter and flour. So you kind of make somewhat like a roux to start out with to make it thicker. And then that's when you add in all the spices that you want your cheese to be flavored after. So, I mean, it's inevitable, but then this was like the, uh, the broccoli floret. I don't know if it'll focus. Specs that you'll get if you cook it too long. 
So it just depends. I mean, that's a good way to conceal that there's vegetables in there if you're cooking for uh, people that don't like vegetables as much. But yeah, I feel like as an adult, I love mac and cheese. I, I'm such a sucker. If I see it as a side, you know, at a restaurant, it's like I'll be eating like the biggest meal in the world and then if there's a side of mac and cheese, I'll be like, can I also get a side of mac and cheese? It's like, it's a, what do you call that? It's when you, it's like when you're weak for something. I'm sure there's a term for it and then as I'm gonna be editing this video, I'm gonna be going on Google. It's not your Achilles heel. Ugh, I forget. If you guys know, just let me know. So I moved the light this way, so hopefully there won't be a shadow like in my last video. Um, even just doing my last video, it kind of made me have that realization that with mukbangs, at least, I feel like, or even just filming in general, if you don't keep up with it, you can get rusty really quick. It's not like, I don't feel like it's like learning how to ride a bike. It's just you have to continually do it so that you get better. And so even yesterday, I was kind of like, hmm kind of let this go on for too long like I was getting better at reaction videos but then my mukbangs suffered so I'm hoping that I'll be able to squeeze in more of these I think I've made this uh, mac and cheese on a few occasions for like potlucks and I don't know about you but when I go to potlucks I'm always curious if people are like actually enjoying the food that I bring and you know I have a sense of pride when people go back for like seconds so this mac and cheese is probably one of those things that I enjoy making because you know, it's really hard to screw up mac and cheese. Well, I guess it contradicts what I told you guys earlier about screwing up on a few occasions. But in general, I mean, it's just cheese, milk, and pasta, you know. So, finished it all. Anyhow, thank you guys so much for joining me for another mukbang. If you guys like this macaroni and cheese mukbang, make sure you give me a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.